Hey guys, welcome to the Minute of Strength. This is your second exercise, your second drill in our three-part series, building that, that foundation of a swing pattern. All right, so hopefully last, you know, you've practiced your vintage swing and your assistance drill hanging from a pull-up bar and maybe even the chin-up with the hang to increase that range of motion in your wrists, shoulders, and build some resilience in your tendons and ligaments through, through your whole upper body, okay? Second, now we in the second exercise is going to be an outlaw gag swing with a kettlebell. Now we're adding momentum. So last week we went from a dead exercise, completely dead, um, no momentum required, not a lot of deceleration, some assistance, okay, to build resilience in the shoulder. Now we're adding momentum. And if you're not ready for this, you're going to do it from dead. I'll give you a variation of it. All right. So you're going to get your gag. You're going to put it through the handle of your kettlebell. You're going to stop behind the heels just like we do with the vintage, the vintage swing, all right? In order to load those hamstrings properly. Get it behind me. And nice deep breath in. Exhale. You want your hands to come right on the insides of your, your groin. Your wrist, the outside of your wrist will actually hit your inner thigh. And this sets you up for that necessity, I call it necessity for technique. Exhale on the top. I squeeze my glutes tight. I really feel that in my glutes and my hamstrings. It's a nice, slow movement. It's not aggressive, but it creates a little more time under tension, which is very difficult to do with a kettlebell swing because the, when your hand is attached to the bell, the, the movement is a little bit quicker. Uh, range of motion is a little bit less. So by adding the gag, I've got more time in the movement pattern. I've got more muscle engagement, especially due to the, the thick grip and the angle of the grip. So I'm forcing through my hands and my feet, forcing my core to work much, much, much harder and very efficient, very safe. A couple of things that to look for that could go wrong. I see this a lot. I just saw this with a client yesterday. So I come up with the swing and if the bell starts to fall before I do, or it starts to roll around at the top. If you break that line, that line of the arm, the hand, the rope and the bell, if you break that chain anywhere, slow, either slow down or speed up. So the barometer here, the key, or the baseline for you should be shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand, the gag, and the kettlebell should be in a perfect straight line, okay? The other thing to look for is making sure that you're not reaching forward with the shoulders and hiking the shoulders. You want to keep your shoulders down, pull your shoulder blades together through the entire movement pattern. It'll become very natural and you'll see how much more efficient the movement is when you do that. So those are a few things to look for. So no breaking of this chain, no hiking or reaching forward with the shoulders, allowing the shoulder blades to open. Consciously think of pulling them back, okay? Now, your assistance drill for this, we're going to add, just like we did with the hang, we're gonna do the same exact thing, except we're gonna add, while you're hanging, just pulling your knees to your chest, just to engage the core just a little bit more and give you something to do while you're hanging. So, just like we did last week, we, we're gonna hang overhand grip, Release, release, hang, couple of breaths, pack those shoulders, and then I just want you to bring your knees up into your chest. Curl up and down and hang. Pack the shoulders, pull the shoulder blades down, okay? Shoulder heads away from your ears, and then pull the knees in toward your chest slowly, and try to rock back slightly. Now, if you use momentum, you'll defeat the purpose of this. You really want to pack those shoulders and pull your knees up, and it's okay. If, if this is all you've got, perfectly fine. The idea is to create a movement pattern with your, with your legs and your hips while keeping your shoulders packed, okay? So, pull, and then down, and then hang. So you'll see how packed my shoulders are and how much more range I have if I relax. So what I'm trying to mimic for you guys is 
the idea of bending your knees, extending at the hips, pulling back on those shoulders while you're being pulled in one direction and your hips are going in another direction. This is a great assistance drill for that progression right there, right? So practice those maybe three to five times, just like you did last week. If you want to try an underhand grip, again, you can add in, you can add the, the chin up in or underhand grip, rolling your hips up, knees into your chest and try to roll up and hold that for a split second and then release it, hang again. All right guys, so there's your assistance drill for your, your gag sw kettlebell swing. Now we're going to give you the next progression with the kettlebell which is a two-handed dead swing. So we're gonna lose that momentum. And this is where this drill really becomes relevant because as you pull up from dead, you want to make sure that your shoulders are packed from the very beginning and not have that bell pull you forward because what I like to do is I like to have you use a heavier bell from dead than you did with the, with the gag swing, okay? So I think this is a 24 kilo and I go to a 40 kilo, all right, for my dead swing. So it'll look like this. So I've got two hands on the bell behind my heels. My back is flat, hopefully parallel to the floor, I can't see. Uh, get those hips back. Shoulders back, right? They're packed. Shoulder blades are pinched together. And I just stand up and start my swing from dead. Exhale on the way up. I don't care how high the bell goes. That is not the objective. The objective is to use your entire posterior chain, your lower abs especially, your glutes, to raise that bell off the ground and make it effortless on your arms, especially your shoulders, right? You don't want this pulling on those tendons and ligaments. So let me show you, show you again. So behind the heels, back is flat. And from dead, squeeze the glutes. Right back to dead. Keep the shoulders packed. Now this is what it could look, look like if you don't pack the shoulders. If you have some people try to go around from the very beginning, it could look like that. Too much energy put into it could look like that. Avoid those things. Really be conscious of what you're feeling, where you should be feeling it. You should feel nothing in your shoulders, nothing in your elbows, nothing in your wrists. Should be glutes, lower abs, maybe light up the hamstrings a little bit. Definitely not the lower back. So practice that drill. Practice your, your gag swing. Gag swing 10 to 20 or 30 seconds to a minute if you've done this before and you have that type of endurance. The dead swing, five to 10. The second you feel fatiguing in your lower back, if you do, stop, all right? We'll be back next week with the third segment and the comprehensive workout that we put together for you with a very unique flow drill uh, and suspension that will put all this together. And then again, we'll give you the, give you the full workout, all right? Guys, have a great week, practice this and we'll see you next Tuesday.